Good afternoon, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Um, here at the Men's Health Clinic, we try and adopt a holistic approach to patient care. Part of your new patient consultation encompasses a in-body 770 body composition scan. Now it measures numerous physiological parameters and it's to serve as a benchmark from whence you can improve and hopefully demonstrate not only that TRT is effective, but the adjustments you have made to your lifestyle, your diet and your physical exercise have actually been beneficial. Because how do we judge the effectiveness of hormone replacement therapy? Is it simply by the numbers? Is it simply by reversing the negative symptoms of low testosterone when they are often multifactorial? Uh, the InBody 770 scanner gives us another tool in our arsenal. Now, we do have guys who are skinny fat. So we find that they have high visceral fat levels. So you cannot judge a book by its cover. So this is an essential tool when you want to provide a holistic service because most clinics will go by, how do you feel? These are your numbers, all good, crack on. But there is deeper, there is things deeper than just the superficiality of quantitative numbers and how do you feel? So the InBody 770 performs part of the new patient consultation and follow-up consultations. Keep working because health is not a destination. It's a continual journey that you need to work on day to day. Now, much like hormones, they need to be stable every single day. So you guys know that I'm a massive advocate of microdosing, HCG and testosterone. HCG to maintain function and testosterone to optimize your male hormones. And we do on occasion use adjuvants to help facilitate that process. Because again, anabolic hormones versus catabolic hormones, and you can divide the anabolic hormones into testosterone, DHT and estradiol, and you want a healthy ratio of test to S to DHT. And then you should have the foundations necessary to build upon so that you can crack on with life. So my biggest piece of advice that I give to people when they hand over responsibility to me to look after their hormone, hormonal health is to crack on with life. Do not obsess about the minutiae because hormones take time. You have time for them to stabilize and then you need to allow the hormone to take effect and influence the function of the tissue. So it isn't a, I'm gonna say it, wham bam, thank you ma'am. Um, it is a slow evolved process because physiology adapts with time and you cannot have a one size fits all methodology to TRT and to life. So much like diet, people are very passionate about diets. Vegan's the only way to go. Low carb, high fat is the way to go. Uh, EMAD, uh, time restricted feeding. Everybody's very passionate, but I'm sure you'll find that your dietary needs change with time. Depending on your physiology, your requirements and your utilization, so you're not going to suggest that a sedentary person has the same diet as an athlete. And you're not going to suggest that a power athlete is going to have the same diet as an endurance athlete. It doesn't make sense. So you cannot have a one size fits all methodology to anything. What you must have is a considered approach, a holistic approach in order to help facilitate 
games because that's what it's all about games no it's all about long-term physical and psychological well-being and recognizing that this takes time and this takes hard work just keep up in the dose just keep up in the dose um the morons start with a dose of 200 milligrams and if you don't feel well on 200 milligrams up the dose don't worry about the numbers one of my guys um four weeks in had a testosterone of 98 on a protocol of 12.5 milligrams of test sip daily and 100 iu of hcg daily so the bros would have him up his dose funnily enough we're going to decrease his dose so paradoxically with a testosterone of 98 he actually feels lethargic now this is actually a common occurrence because there is a misconception that the higher the testosterone you have the better you're going to feel because that is a fallacy you want to have normal testosterone levels because normal is good. You're designed to fight and fornicate. So why would you want to defy your genetics? The guys that need high levels um, tend to be the bigger guys. So as you guys know, I have some pretty big guys on my books and their levels or their need for testosterone is greater than the need for a tiny person. But it is not dramatically different because with micro dosing, you have to have an appreciation of normal physiology. It doesn't matter how big you are. Actually, we're not that too dissimilar. So if we're purported to produce seven milligrams of testosterone a day, uh, nobody is the Incredible Hulk and nobody needs uh, 100 milligrams or whatever um, so normality that's what we're seeking normality because that's super good so let's go back to this in body 770 scanner that we use um, it is a medical grade scanner and uh, Lydia and I did our scores the other day 98 oh god stoked because i'm not being funny my training has changed and uh, my diet has slipped a little bit i've been advised i need to lose a kilo um so yeah i, I know why that is um been um evolving into a chunky monkey never 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 be never evolve into a chunky monkey um being a chunky monkey is detrimental to your health. Just wait for our new blog that Joseph's working on right now. Um, so yeah, score of 98 is pretty good. Uh, everybody starts at 80 and you gain points for muscle and you lose points for fat. Uh, it's disproportionately weighted towards dudes because obviously we have more muscle mass. So Lydia only scored 84. Now, I'm not being funny, Lydia is healthier than me from looking at her visceral fat and her percentage body fat. If you compare male and female, obviously you can't do that, but uh, if you compare the averages. Um, lean muscle mass, obviously I'm massively higher than she is, and so my score is uh, I won. Let's, 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 let's leave it as I won. Um, so yeah, I was a little bit worried because things have changed and I'm not as uh, toned or ripped because I'm not doing, doing heavy weights, but quite pleased with my, my skeletal muscle mass score, which is quite cool. So uh, I stood on, all good. Lydia stood on, the alarm bells went. <laughs> warning, warning, heavy load, heavy load. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually joking. <laughs> um, Lydia, she's one of those people, physically fit, intelligent, she has to have a weakness. Do you want to know what her weaknesses are? <laughs> because nobody's perfect. We all have things that we need to work on. 
If you believe that you are perfect, you are seriously, seriously misguided. What is it Vince Lombardi said? You can um, achieve excellence, but you can't achieve perfect. If you strive for perfection, you can achieve excellence. And I think that's very true. And I think that's something that we need to, um, to work on uh, and appreciate. Because again, there is no destination. There is only the journey and the appreciation of the journey. Super important. I've achieved my goal. Brilliant. I've achieved my dopamine reward. What next? What next? Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving forwards. That doesn't sound very zen, does it? But there's a truth in that. Seeking Nirvana. I wouldn't want to seek Nirvana. Nirvana sounds like it's wonderful, but you need contrast to appreciate life. So what are Lydia's weaknesses? As we've already alluded to, she's physically fit. She's intelligent. Are you ready? Needles. Birds. And belly buttons. I'm going to be so much trouble for this. Peace <laughs>